Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I welcome you all to another episode of the Beacons of Hope show. This is Ramadan Radio and I'm your host today, Ambreen Ahmed. So today's topic that I decided to do is having a happy home. Within this, we'll be uh, discussing um, child parenting relationship, parental techniques, the environmental aspect of the home and the emotional and moral support and socialising in the home. So the reason today's topic I chose, um, I could come with so many reasons, but why this topic was important to discuss in today's time, specifically if you want to talk about the situation or the circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this is extremely relatable. So, you know, many of us, you know, when it was the lockdown, we had many months together with our children to create a good bondship and have a happy, fun environment. Many families, it was quite strange because they were not used to being together for such a long time. Some built a good, strong relationship. They learned from each other, you know, they had a better, you know, a kind, caring, you know, loving relationship. And some, they felt, you know, they were struggling or they couldn't really, you know, relate with each other. And some were mentally, you know, struggling with a lot of, you know, uh, problems themselves that they were facing. But having a ha- happy home, we should actually generally work on this. And I'm going to share some ideas that I will be uh, explaining the importance of happy having a happy home. So, like, you know, we've heard the saying, home sweet home, but... You know, why don't we try to make it happen, you know, practically, you know. When, you know, when we're on a journey and we're nearer to coming home and we say, oh, and, you know, when we land, when we, when we arrive, we say, oh, alhamdulillah, home, sweet home. And it is home. Home is where, you know, you feel happy, you feel comfort. And there's a lot of memories, good memories, happy memories. And you want that to be everlasting as well. And you you want a home to be feeling like you can feel comfort, you can feel that you can, you know, feel relaxed and not run away. You don't want to be going away from your home. You want to feel, you know, that this is the home that I feel, you know, happy with. And there's a lot of memories in a home, you know. this It could be like when a husband and wife, that's their first home. It could be that this is, a, this is their home where they're, Child, the first baby was, you know, the first newborn was born. So, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, a home is where we should have sweet, happy memories and try to build on a happy home. So, moving on to the child parenting relationship, being a parent is the great blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. You know, our children are, are an emanat to us from Allah. And it's the best ever gift that we can, that Allah Ta'ala has uh, given us. <clears throat> Overall, you know, being a parent, that you know, you'll face various challenges and pressures. And as parents, we want is the what we want is the best for our children, and to have a strong parent-child relationship can help that to lead to be a you know a, a good outcome. You know, if you have a good relationship with your children you know it will be you it will lead to a a positive outcome so why do you think a positive parent child relationship is very important for me as a parent the parent and child relationship is one of is one that nurtures the physical emotional and social development of the child you know the parent child relationship develops over time and this is influenced by child's characteristics the parent's characteristics and the context in which uh, a family is operating. So we know that our role as parents is a critical one in terms of like child development. And it's no secret that, you know, obviously being a parent is one of the most seriously challenging roles in the world. We always go go above and beyond to make sure we raise happy and successful children. And we try all different ideas, styles. We'll go, you know, to the we'll go to out of our depth to make our you know uh, children happy. 
And at the end, it all depends on how we have that relationship with our child and with our children. The stronger the parent-child relationship, the better the upbringing. So how to understand really a parent-child relationship? You know, a parent out, you know, a parent and a child relationship is a very, very unique relationship. You know, it's a really, it's a, it's a relationship which is unique bond that, you know, it's a bond that, you know, nurtures the holistic growth and development of a child. It's the, it's the foundation of their behavior, the traits and their values, you know, how they are, you know, their, their, their mannerisms. So children that, you know, if you, see, if you see children that have a healthy and a happy relationship with their parents and have a happy home, you know, they are more likely to develop, you know, positive relationships with other people around them and secure a good bondship. You know, they, they can manage their emotions when faced with stress and difficult situations. You know, they feel very confident in their, you know, attitude as well. But children who have like family issues or there's domestic violence or there's arguing, shouting, you know, uh, abuse going on, a lot of family dy dynamics, physical and emotional uh, development is affected. You know, the rising of their behavior problems among the family increases. You know, they tend to have discipline problems. You know, violent behavior can occur and disruptive behavior you know, they have problems in school and become disruptive. You know, even their learning, you know, their education, their learning can, you know, be effective as well, can affect them. And, you know, it can lead to bullying to other children. And these are the, some of the problems that can occur. So how can we actually, you know, make a change and strengthen, you know, strengthen our parent and child relationship? You know, it does require, I, 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 only, I, me as a parent, you know, there's challenges, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, but you shouldn't, you know, you try your best, inshallah, Allah will make it easy, but it does require a lot of work, it's an effort, you know, parenting is, I'm telling you, it's one of the toughest job ever, you know, being a mom, I mean, we're not like a mom just for seven or eight hours a day, we're like being a, a, a mother, it's like a 24 hours a day work, you know, 24, we're working 24 hours, basically, but by maintaining a really good relationship and a close relationship and an open, you know, have an open communication with your children, you know, parents can, you know, you can stay connected with your children to them. Building a strong parent-child connection actually makes, a, per, a you know, parenting easier. You know, your children feel more connected, you know, you, you, they feel more connected to the parents and are more, you know, inclined to actually... Um, you know, listen and help, you know, and help you. Children, feel, you know, they feel connected and are more willing to talk to parents about any issues. And you do want, you want your children to feel comfortable. I mean, me in my own, obviously, I'm, uh, what I'm saying to you is what I try to do myself. Uh, because in my times, you know, my mom and dad came back from, back home in Kashmir. And, you know, obviously um, their way, their upbringing was different. You know, you know the um, Alhamdulillah, no complaints. Uh, you know, we had a good relation. We have a good rela I have a good relationship with my mom and uh, my dad. But the relationship that my kids have with me is a totally different level. You know, sometimes I, I, we, we, I myself would feel embarrassed asking like personal questions, you know, to my parents because their their culture is different. But here, obviously, I've been I I'm born here in UK. Kids are more. Like the time and the t uh, times and the uh, times and uh, you know it, it have changed. So kids are more open. You know they ask so many questions and you know they they want to know what's going on. And we should have that friendly approach as well. And you know or have that open uh, you know connection. The communication should be you know strong. You know you want your child to feel comfortable in speaking to you, not feel oh I can't speak to. You. Uh, my mum about this she's just gonna get upset so you know before my uh, children actually speak to me says mum we want to tell you something but promise not to get upset and I says okay um, I'll, tr I'll try not to get upset is it something to worry about this is no no nothing to worry about but we know that you might get upset for some reason but just trust us that we we've come to you because you know we know that you know 
you, you listen to us or you know you want we we want to tell you because you know we want to feel you know that we feel comfortable in telling you whatever we wish to you know whatever we want to share you know some ideas or some some problems that they occurred they want to tell me said that's okay that's fine so with me in my home i have that friendly relationship with my kids like i'm a mom as as long alongside uh, i'm a friend with them as well so i do discipline them but i don't always say no you can't do this you can't do that i just say well if you do this there's some there's this there's, these are the choices this is your choice and if you tend to do this there's going to be consequences so i don't say no don't do this don't do that don't do this as there's choices and consequences and as parents you know we need to be there for our children they're gonna them they will do they will do mistakes uh and it's part of you know learning as well you know you might we're not perfect as humans you know we need to think back how how were we when we were children did we like our parents telling us what to do do this do that yes we did in some aspects but we didn't want to be bombarded with so many things so let's you know we go with the time have that easy going relationship with your children not as you know and have that friendly approach which you will have a um, a good connection with your children and you know in islam parents and children are a bond you know it, it you know they it's a it's a bond good relationship and responsibility for a parent is to you know care you know upbringing of their children and it's mentioned you know several verses in the quran Allah Almighty says, "All oh, you have who have believed, protect yourselves and your families from fire, whose fuel is people and stones." And that's mentioned in Quran. Um, it's in Surah sixty-six, Ayat five. So, how do we, you know, want to, you know, ward off that fire from our families? We need to show them the right way and to teach them the difference between right and wrong. You know, children are a trust given to the parents. So, we as parents, we will be, you know, will be held accountable for this trust. And, you know, on the day of judgment, you know, we'll be asked. So it is our responsible, you know, for the moral, ethical and the basic and essential religious teaching of our children as well. You know, give them the basic foundation. And as you know, you don't have that guilt, you know, when what we tend to do is like um, we might just, you know, they're small, you know, at the age of seven, we'll say we won't teach them how to salah. Everybody's different. I'm not saying that we should all be perfect Muslims, but at least you know the basic etiquettes you know mannerisms saying uh, you know when you see, when you when you come into the house say assalamu alaikum be peace be with you say that this is a dua and when you respond we say wa alaikum salam rahmatullah you know it's a dua that we actually saying peace be with you too you know tell them the uh, you know you start them show them how to you know to start praying slowly slowly and you know what we tend to do is we tend to teach them at the uh, later on at the early late stages and then it's quite challenging when they become teenagers because obviously their hormones are all over the place and it's very challenging at that time and Allah Ta'ala says you know children you know in the Quran your wealth and your children are going to be a test for you so as parents you try your best give them the basic foundation and inshallah Allah will make it easy for you you know give them the basic morals and teachings and give your children good etiquettes in Islam and give them positive and that, that will turn you know give you a positive outcome and they will have a uh, mashallah good uh, behavior as well you know a mother role you know um, as i said to you before that you know mother's role is a very important role it's even a greater one it's such a great role to have and it's a blessing as well you know while the children uh, you know they are young they're very close you know you have you want to have you know when they're young they have a very close relationship and you know they depend upon you as well and they tend to spend more time with you as a mother you know that's that that's you know mother is like they say mother is the first school it's you know and we as mothers should be conscious of our roles and do our best to make it beneficial for their development as they set the journey of life you know it's such a you know uh, mashallah uh, subhanallah uh, a blessing in itself being a mother you know parents care and guidance are fundamental you know to the child's upbringing you know nowadays i see you know some parents right they you know so preoccupied with their jobs you know making money or with their social lives with children and children are you know they're often neglected and they 
actually go, turn to something else, like where they do get the attention, you know, like they'll have friends. You know, subhanAllah, there's an increase of many children, you know, turning into drugs or they'll, you know, do things that they shouldn't be doing, you know, burglary or something, because, you know, they feel the buzz, you know, they're getting the attention and, you know, somebody says, oh, how's things at home? And if you're not getting that attention, you know, they'll say, oh, don't worry, you know, take this, this will make you better. And they're getting the attention, aren't they, from something else? And, you know, sometimes people can, you know, other people can start grooming, grooming them and give that attention. So, you know, we, so, you know, as parents or some or family members, we'll often ne we'll neglect them. We we'll leave them for hours, you know, we think that the television, you know, that's it, you watch it. Not, not as if television is wrong, but we tend to leave it for hours and hours. And I'm not being like, you know, everyone's the same. Everybody has their own issues and things. But this, you know, obviously we need to try to change um, our way of doing things. Instead of putting them on the television all the time, maybe do something, sit with them with the television program. So you know what they're actually watching as well. They, if sometimes you might leave them unattended, they'll watch some violent programs and it can really affect them as they become teenagers as well. They can, you know, turn to violence as well. Oh, we like there's some computer games that we tend to nowadays. Kids are now playing computer games and they're playing computer games with their friends and having that relationship with their friend. They're chatting to them. So why not have that, you know, at that time, if they, they can play computer, yes, they can have that really, you know, games to play for a short while. You have a, like a, you know, time uh, schedule that this half an hour you play with your friend. And maybe spend some time with you playing with as a mom or as a dad, you play computer games as well. You know, so that you have that, you know, closeness and bondship as well. So, you know, me personally, having me personally, having a positive relationship between parents and children, are it's a very important in all areas of children's development. You know, having quality time, building that, you know, trust, creating a caring, you know, environment, you know, and, you know, a respectable, you know, family environment. It's, it's just you need to have that. You know, you don't want your kids to turn away and go somewhere else, and, you know. And there's no correct formula for getting your parent and child relationship right. But if your relationship with your child is built on warm and loving and being responsible and having good interactions, most of the time, you you know, your child, he, the child will feel loved most of the time and secure. And they'll know that you're there for them always. But... Now, you know, I'm going to share you some, you know, some parental techniques. Let's move on to the next part. You know, what you should be actually uh, doing, you know, helping them out. You know, um, there's a few things that you can be try to be encouraging to them without being, uh, you know, we tend to be judgmental as parents as well. Um, listen to your child and try to, you know, tune into your child's real feelings they might tell you some lots of things that you don't wish to hear, uh, but that happened to them, or they might be upset about something. But just stop and think what your child's behavior is telling you. Just, you know, they might be in a room, uh, you know, just like a scenario, they might be in a room, right, not talking too much, and you just, and they just want to be close with you, or, you know, they can ask, you can ask them what's the matter, you know, give them a hug, or ask them to help you. Without, you know, if they don't wish to talk to you, you know, just let them talk to talk to you when they, when they are ready, you know, they feel ready to talk. You know, there'll be a time, right, uh, th there can be another scenario like, uh, for instance, your child will come home from school and uh, they'll come in really angry and upset, storming their feet and they'll throw their school bags. And as mothers or as parents, we'll react to them, what what's the matter with you? Why are you throwing your bag? You know, but... Uh, it's so shouting at the child. We don't know. Uh, you know, God knows what happened throughout the day. Maybe something happened in school and he's got angry and he's upset. So instead of say, shouting at the child, just think about it. Just think, take a uh, uh, breather and just say, what's the, uh, um, what's the matter? Do you want to just go freshen up or something? And, you know, let's have something to eat instead of shouting. And then just ask them about the day. How was your day? And... You know, if they're ready to tell you, just be softer in your approach instead of always reacting and shouting at them. Uh, 
being, you know, uh, in the moment with, you know, being that, you know, at that moment with your child, it gives the child an opportunity to take out, you know, to speak, and they feel that they've got the lead as well. And, you know, let your, you know, you know, there's so many things that you can do with your children, you know, to build that happy home and connection. You know, have that one to one. Let your let your child help you in cooking. You know, sometimes there's some ideas that the children will come across. You know, so you know, give you support your child's idea. You know, when your child, you know, expresses an opinion, you could use the conversation. You know, or you know, a way to learn more about your child's thoughts and feelings, even if they're different from yours. You know, smiling. Subhanallah. What did you know? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Smile." You know, it's a sadqa, it's a charity. You know, smile at them, give them eye contact. Someone smiles at me, subhanallah, like somebody outside in the street gives you a smile. Honestly, it changes your mood. It does change your mood. It makes you like, oh, you know, I don't even know that person, but that person gave me a lovely smile and then you smile back. It, you know, you might be down or you might be thinking about something while you're walking and, and you, you you have face-to-face -face with somebody, an eye contact, and that person gives, shows you a smile and it actually changes you, makes you really happy. Can you imagine, like... If we give a smile to our children or even our loved ones, you know, our husband or our wife, uh, you know, husband or wife or, you know, vice versa, the family environment, you know, even, you know, giving a smile changes your mindset and your mood as well. And this shows a good expressions of warmth and that you have that interest and you want to help your child feel secure and build confidence. So me personally, quality time is very important in having a positive relationship Time together gets to know, you know, you get to know about each other's experiences, thoughts and feelings and interests. And this shows that we value and appreciate, you know, we appreciate, your, you know, that your child and, you know, we say he, you know, and you, and that builds a fantastic relationship amongst your time. And quality time can happen anytime, any, anywhere you want. You can have it in a car journey, you know, when you're cooking, maybe have that one-to-one -one you know, it's good moments to give a chance, you know, to have a chance to communicate and have, you know, use positive messages, you know, use smile, you know, laugh, you know, have eye contacts, hugs, you know, gentle touches like that, you know, find time to like, that's it, you know, have that one to one, say, I'm going to switch my phone off and, you know, minimize the disruptions and distractions. Why? This shows that you're keen to spend uninterrupted time with them. And there might be times when it's not possible every day. I know that you can't have, you know, every day one-to-one. -one. But, you know, you need to plan some, you know, a regular one-to-one -one time, you know, maybe after a few days or maybe, you know, in a weekend. You know, your, ch your child learns and develops through spending time and interacting with you. So, you know, when your child expresses different opinions as well from yours, listen and try not to get upset. We tend to get upset. Or, um, but just, you know, and if you do try to get upset by words, I think that, you know what I do? Um, I said, listen, uh, I said to my children sometimes, okay, if you think I'm going to get upset, can you please write it down? And then I'll respond in words as well. Because, you know, because sometimes you might even, it's hard to hold sometimes what you want to, uh, when you want to, when you want to say something to them and they'll get, you know that they're going to get upset. So I says, can you put it in a, can you put it in uh, on in writing and then I'll respond to you in writing, you know. Also, another thing that you should do, and I think we, you know, set some, you know, firm and f fair family rules. Rules, you know, are really good to do. You know, they're a clear statement about how your family want to look after, you want to be looked after and, you know, how each members of family need to be treated, you know. <clears throat> You know, if you have rules, let the, you know, have it, do it together as a family unit so that, you know, you're creating that uh, happy environment at home. You know, sit together. What do you think we should have in this, uh, you know, our uh, uh, our uh, home role, rules at home? What do you think we should do? So they're all, we're all, you're all united together and you're all, you know, working as a team. And also, you know, it builds a good relationship as well. And it's not just like, you know, like we parents say that we're always telling them what to do. We're actually including the children as well. You know, just think about yourself as, you know, when we were a child, we we didn't like to be name calling that we're all at faults as well. So, you know, you know, just have like, 
just say that if we're, if they're at fault, say that yes, you'll do mistakes, but I'd rather you, you know, if they're te- if they're learning, if they're telling like uh, lies or they're doing things, say that I'd rather you tell me uh, if you've done something wrong. I'm not going to shout so that they feel comfortable. Say, Mom, I want to tell you something, but promise me not to get upset. So that's fine. You tell me, and then tell them that if you, it's better if you tell me because if you tend to hide it, you'll you know obviously you tend to get double trouble, don't you? So let them feel comfortable in sharing their ideas and if they have any upsetness that they they feel comfortable in discussing it with you. And, you know, discuss things at dinner time, speak to them, listen to them, you know, compliment each other, take turns for, you know, different events, have, you know, arrange for events, you know. So praise each other regular, I would say, and have family time and appreciate, you know, the of being part of a loving, a loving family team. And, you know, do fun things as a family, learn and learn what you want to do, love, you know, that you love doing. And, you know, sometimes surprise each other to, for gifts as well. You know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said exchange on giving each other's gifts. Anyway, um, we're going to end here now, the first segment, and we'll continue, inshallah, after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the Beacons of Hope show. This is Ramadan Radio. And just before the break, we were actually speaking about having a happy home, you know, some parental techniques that I shared. Uh, so we mentioned, uh, you know, I mentioned about exchanging gifts with your family members um, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, encouraged us to do so. Um, why? Because this actually increases happiness and love in the home. And it actually does do that. I mean, like keep surprising you know, we should try to surprise each other, give a gift. And it really brings a um, a smile to, you know, everyone's face, even a child's face and even an adult face as well. So Alhamdulillah, try to, you know, exchange gifts and which will bring happiness and uh, 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 lots of love as well, inshallah. Uh, so now we will continue and discuss about the actual environmental aspect of the home and the actual emotional, moral support and socializing in the home. So, uh, you know, um, there was a the, there was a hadith that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that what you need to do is actually play with them for the first seven years of their life and then teach them for the next seven years and then advise them for the next seven years and after that. As I thought really more and more about this hadith, I realized that Islam has provided some wonderful guidelines for parents in order to raise our children. So what the Hadith gives us is the guidance to divide the upbringing of a child actually into uh, three stages. For the first seven years from age zero to seven, this is the time that we actually let the child to play. And, you know, we need to roll up our, you know, our parenting sleeves to build a good, strong connection with our child. So these are the foundation years. When a child is constantly influenced by the surroundings and they learn about, you know, and they learn and they're observing as well. Another thing is that children imitate their parents more than anyone. So if you if you find any undesired behavior in your child, check check if you or your spouse, uh, you know, act similarly, you know, like in front, you know, do not act, you know, if you're having an argument or disagreement, don't. Don't try to have an argument in front of your child, you know, because they actually see it. And then when it comes to them and they're arguing and you'll tell them, oh, why are you arguing? Well, mom and dad, we saw you arguing as well. You were shouting. So they will actually uh, role play that as well. So try if you're going to have an argument. What what we tend to do is like the best thing is to do is not to have an argument in front of your children. You should try to walk away and say and maybe have that as a rule. So that if we have any disagreements, we are not going to show it in front of our children. We're going to have a, you know, we'll have it in our own time or in a separate room. And don't show that you're having disagreements because it does affect the child as, you know, you know, emotionally as well. And they feel, they do feel upset about this as well. So as I was saying, like, you know, you know, at the age of zero to seven, these are the foundation years uh, that we should be, you know, basing our relationship and, you know, this is a time when they're growing. It's a, you know, th- these are the, you know, it's a rock solid time that, you know, that we should be uh, bringing them up properly. And the next, you know, obviously the other next years, are, they're more challenging. The next seven years from age seven to 14, 
you know so once children reach the age of seven they are ready for a logical reasoning and islamic ethics so this is a time when children are like sponges ready to soak up anything and everything you show and you teach them and you tell them they actually act upon it to try their best so the second stage of actually upbringing is the time to teach them secular and religious knowledge, halal uh, versus haram. They should be, you know, starting to follow the salah and you should te encourage them to do so. You know, as mentioned in the hadith reported in Tirmidhi, the Prophet, peace be, upon him, uh, peace be upon him, said, teach your child to pray. Uh, beginning at the age of seven, uh, seven and punish him for refusing it from the age of 10. Uh, that doesn't mean that you smack him in crazy or something. Just, you know, like I said, give him a, there's choices and consequences. And obviously there's, you know, you don't need to, it's not smacking your children. You can, you know, show them other ways of actually disciplining them. And also teach them, you know, different activities that they need to know as well. Teach them the sports as well. So Prophet, peace be upon him, said, teach your children to swim, you know, archery, horse, uh, you know, riding. And, you know, you teach them the sports that, because sports have many, many benefits, including teamwork, leadership, sportsmanship and physical fitness. So at this stage, children are quite young and they're still in their, you know, process of learning what is right and what is wrong. So essentially, it's the parent's responsibility to teach the child how to behave and how to choose his environment and decide what type of people to fill in uh, that environment with so that they can continue to do what is best for them. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in every person the uh, good tendencies and the bad tendencies just so choose for us to choose and testing them, testing us who will be performing them. So parents must encourage and grow the good tendencies in the child so he can become a useful person that helps himself and his people. Uh, so it's mentioned, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Surah Darim, uh, verses 6, which is translated, O oh, you believe, protect yourselves and your families from the fire whose fuel is man and stone. So, and the, you know, that's actually saying that, and the protection of yourself and your family from hellfire won't be with anything but the good education you know, practicing good morals and the guidance to nobility. So, you know, like you need to have boundaries. Without boundaries, society, you know, would be crazy and chaotic. Similarly, children need a set of boundaries to guide their behavior, which gives the children the freedom to act and behave. So if they do not know what the boundaries are, they're going to do what they want to do. And, you know, whether they, you know, think it's right or wrong or whatever. So you need to, uh, you know, teach your children beforehand what is correct and what is actually a good behavior. Then they will have the guidelines to act within the boundaries and will not be left wondering and, you know, confused about it. As a parent, you know, set rules and boundaries for everyone in the family, including, you know, yourself first as adults and, your, you know, as parents. And take care to explain to your children why they must obey them. You know, children love logical reasons, so let them ask questions while you calmly explain to them. So finally, the final seven years are from 14 to 21. Once your child hits 14 or puberty, children achieve independence and they develop their own, uh, you know, personality. The hormones are all over the place. And, you know, they'll have, you know, temper, some tempers, some you know, temper, different types of temper. They'll get angry. They'll have emotional you know, situations that, you know, it's hard for them to deal with as well. But during these critical years, be friend with them, be friendly with them, advise them and do what you can understand that they are now adults according to Islam. And, you know, the choices that they that, that are theirs to make are right or wrong. As parents, it's our, res our responsibility to advise them. You know, like we tend to tell our children, right, um, that when they become like adults or 16, 17, says, you, we tend to say, can you behave as an adult? But when they come with suggestions, then we say, listen, I know best. You need to sit down or, you know, I don't want to hear you. But then they get confused. They think they're having mixed messages. Well, you just said to us, you know, act like adults. But when we're coming out with some views and advice, we're not ready to listen. So we need to respect their, their choices as well and, advise, you know, and listen to them as well and have that build that bond, uh, bondship. So 
I sincerely pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, actually guides us of each of us to establish, to establish a good trusting relationship with our children and, you know, be there with them and, you know, be their good advisors for them, uh, you know, when they need help or advice. And maybe even that, be a cool mum and dad who they adore as well and they'll remember. So having good, you know, good par another parental techniques is having good, you know, education means physical and mental and moral preparation for the child so he can become an actual good individual in the good society. So, like, yeah, moving on to the actual physical preparation, uh, that includes the care of the child's body, you know, and his strength uh, uh, through good feeding and following the actual correct methods in prevention and the treatment of diseases. So having a good nutritional diet is really uh, uh, important for them to have, you know, the mental preparation includes everything that comprises the formation of the correct mental thinking, the ability of good judgment and the profound of thinking and, you know, having that inference uh, so that the child can understand his surroundings you know, judge things and benefit from his and the other uh, uh, experiences. The moral preparation includes the actual instilling and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the best morals, also the discouragement and correction of bad morals and behaviour. So for all, you know, these are the above methods and ways that help parents to reach their goal. You know, the methods of physical preparation we should do, like to make sure that the child is clean in his body's clothes, his surroundings and has a love and, you know, of cleansiness in his life, his or her life. To make sure to feed the child from the good without excessive expenditure or, you know, stinginess. Uh, another thing we can do is to encourage the practice of sports such as running, swimming, you know, um, right, horse riding and the sports that make the body strong and active in a whole, in some, you know, in, 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 a, in some uh, great uh, atmosphere. Methods of mental preparation. We should teach them to read and write and to ensure superiority in all kinds of knowledge and sciences. And also we need to actually teach them to practice attentively looking at all, you know, subhanAllah, Allah's creations and events around them, which will enable his, uh, you know, his or her's mental growth and give him or her the correct inference of capabilities. Uh, touring or traveling in the land, you know, pondering on all the different marks and signs of Allah and the history of, you know, people before and the nations, you know, that's a method of moral preparation that we can show, you know, as well. Uh, showing the values of uh, having good deeds, and the effects on the individuals and society, also showing the effects of bad deeds, all within the child's capability of understanding. You know, we as parents, you know, we should show a, a really a, a practical, we should be a good role model and show a practical good example in our behavior. Because children like to, you know, like this, you know, in, imitate the parents in their sayings and their deeds. So teaching, if, uh, you know, the child, uh, the religious principles and tutoring him in worship, you know, taking into the account the child's capability of understanding, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam had said, order your children to pray at the age of seven, right? Uh, but you treat your children nicely, kindly. The Prophet Wasallam taught us that practically when he was praying as an imam, imam with the with the people, his grandson, al Hassan, son of his daughter, Fatima, may Allah be pleased with him, rode in you know he was on his back while he was actually bowing down and when he finished his prayer some of the companions said you lengthened your you know your bow then the prophet replied answered my grandson rode my back and i hate you know you know rushing haste you know going in a rush so you know he was having not you know not telling his grandson get off me get off you know hold up i'm praying he was letting him have that time and you know being uh, merciful and you know kind to his grandson and one of the important things that parents must actually teach their children is to select the good company and ha and avoid the bad because you know children definitely in this time you know are always influenced by their company the bad behavior can be transmitted through bad company so the prophet muhammad peace be upon him he actually warned us uh, by saying 
the person is following his company behavior, you know, following his company uh, behavior. So everyone must watch for his company. A good hadith is reported by Imam Abu Dawood al Tirmidhi. So yeah, uh, another point I like to add is in, we need to en encouraging the child's uh, sense of belonging to the Muslim Ummah by teaching him the brotherhood between Muslims, teaching him to care for Muslims in any land, and that his part of the Muslim body is to feel joy when Muslims are joyous, to feel sad for Muslim sadness, and to do best to achieve the Muslim nation's goals. All of this can be done practically through by, you know, first and foremost, taking the children to the mosques and introducing them to their brothers and sisters in Islam, regardless to their race or language or, you know, the origin. And also teaching the children the history of the Prophet and his companions and the history of Islam um, into uh, the child's capability of under, you know, uh, understanding. Uh, and thirdly, encouraging children to sympathize with Muslims' problems and to contribute to these solutions such as you know, poverty problems and to donate some money to the hungry Muslims' uh, children and you know, do work for, you know, to do charity work. Uh, also taking part in celebrations, festivals with Muslims and sharing picnics and creating ties with their Muslim brotherhood or sisterhood on, or, you know, on the same age. Um, another thing that they can do is, you know, we can encourage is growing the sense of distinction from society. And that does not mean arrogance or become because of arrogance is, uh, you know, it's forbidden. But it means a sense of being a Muslim, a good Muslim, and that Muslims are different from non-Muslims in their sources of belief and behavior and to clarify that the society is good and bad so as muslims take and benefit from what is good and leave that to avoid what is bad and growing the feeling of love as well allah you know love the really the feeling of love of allah uh, his prophets the muslims and all the muslim or mother people this love will lead to a special behavior towards you know all that all that you know all the people that they can you know have that increased uh, uh, love and friendship so this is a general guidance so every muslim can take care of his ch children and know the correct path that must be followed so we can do the job that we are entrusted to do as allah prescribed us as well as the responsibility the prophet وسلم, has clarified to protect the future generation of muslims so allah said in surah Tawbah, verse 105 what can be translated as and say to do and say do deeds allah will see your deeds and so will his messenger and the believers so and you will be brought back to the all knower of the unseen and the seen and then he will inform you of what you used to do so i pray for a close you know a, a very close relationship a love a loving relationship a happy and fulfilling relationship with our children for all the days of our lives and be reunited with them in Jannah al firdos Amin. So yeah, um, another technique uh, we should implement into our homes is encouraging socialize. You know, being social uh, in the home. You know, socializing. Uh, that doesn't mean just become. Uh, you know, them to be abroad from them to stay. You know, at home is making a house that is um, loving and kind and you know making a house into a home really so as parents we do be we do become very busy sometimes you know with the household work or with relatives and family or be it if you have a job and you're working part-time or full-time a lot of these things can be taken away from our time with our children and we don't have that hands-on approach with bringing them up so and while they're growing up, you know, and so while they're growing up, they're being brought up by external factors such as the school environment, their friends, you know, social media. They keep themselves busy with social media, the television and whatever else, you know, they may consume. And as parents, we may not have that strong connection with them when they grow up and we end up not really knowing nothing about them, really. So you know, have that relationship, don't rely on social media, you know, spend even like we have busy lives at our homes, we all, we, nowadays you do need to, you know, both parents, you know, uh, do need to work, but, you know, have that one hour, two hours of, with your children, one evening, especially at evening times, meal times, we should have that, you know, set time that we have that, 
you know, conversation with our children so that they feel like, you know, our parents are not just always busy, busy, busy doing other things. They are having time for us as well. And, you know, we, as in our homes, we have a set rule that when it comes to meal times, phones and everything should be switched off, you know, because, you, you know, while you're eating, I, I find it personally, in my opinion, it's very rude, like, you're eating and, like, your children are texting or yourself. I mean, it can be, it can happen to us as well as adults. We do text as well. So switch all, you know, keep the phones away, meal times, talk, and have that conversation. And, you know, there might be sometimes things that they want to open up or they want to have a private conversation. Or mom, you know, or dad, I want to have a conversation to you, you know, in separate. Sometimes they don't want to discuss in front of the siblings. So have that time where you just, you know, take your phones off and just spend that time that that's the very important time if you've got busy lives at least in the evening time you have that you know family time family unit where you can increase you know communication and love with you know love towards each other and also you know you need to really understand the children are subhanallah a special gift to us from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know they can become our charity jariya for us if we give our time to them, you know, so within the household, whenever we have time, you know, we should establish proper family time. And many people, you know, we tend to neglect this because they may think, oh, um, you know, if we, if we, they may think if everyone is at home, even if they're in separate rooms that, you know, they think that that is family time. Well, I don't think it is. That's not really proper family time. To establish a real family time, we must have a strong communication with one another and spend you know the real important time with with one another as well maybe you can have you know do movie night or you know games night and you know during the week go out to the park or you know on the weekends you know do something and actually get to know and speak to one another also you can maybe do like um you know on the weekends have you know cooking you know uh you know, have a, a, a rotor of having different, you know, like together have a bondship with each child, have a one-to-one -one, uh, with a child and say, right, like me, mom and dad, we're going to do like, you know, a cooking. We're going to make a starter or a maid and let's do it together. So you're building that one-to-one -one communication with your child and, you know, just do different activities, fun activities with them, you know, and that, that will increase the bond and the relationship with yourselves. Speak to them about their life and what their struggles are, you know, what they're going through and open up to them about your experiences of growing up. Tell them about, you know, the stories that, you know, they, you know, you can tell them like, you know, we, when we were young, this is what our experiences were. We had difficulties as well. And obviously it's a double struggle now for the children in this generation because there's a lot to actual um, follow up because social media there's lots of peer pressure they think we need to behave like this we need to act like this we need to dress like this so you know you need to tell them you need to tell them your experience and you need to be there for them no matter what you they can you they need to think and they need to feel comfortable that we've got our parents or we've got our family you know their family unit we can speak to somebody even our sibling or even the siblings or brothers or sisters that they can actually speak to that they can have that trust and open up you know, any concerns or any uh, struggles that they have or they're facing. You know, sometimes it can be mentally as well that they don't feel well. But we, you know, as Muslims, you know, we shouldn't have, you know, there is Asian culture, we have that, or, you know, generally we have that, you know, stigma that, you know, why is my child, you know, behaving in this manner? You know, you need to grow out of it. But, you know, even if it's you've not experienced it, you need to be, like, quite patient and have that time with your child. Another thing is have quality time. Why do you think it's important to have that positive relationship? Positive relationship between you and your child are built on quality time, you know. You know, time together is how you get to know about you know, each other's experiences, your thoughts, your feelings, you know, how, you know, your changing of interest. You know, this shows that you value and you actually appreciate your child, uh, which is really, you know, which is, you know, really a, a big impact of your relationship it's great for your relationship and quality time can happen anytime anywhere you know you can have it any day you want it can you know you know share a bit of a laugh when you're you know having a you know 
just to sit down together in, in, in your own, in the front room, just have jokes. There's no harm in having that chill time. You know, be a child yourself. You know, try to have fun. You know, you, you know me personally, I sometimes, you chill with my kids as well. I, you know, I stop being a mom and just have a, you know, I try to be in their level, go to their level. I try my best anyway, inshallah, and may, may Allah make it easy for all of us. Eye contact is important. Generally, you know, have hugs and, you know, have a, you know, they, they just give a, you know, a, having a hug, you know, makes a lot of difference, you know. Sometimes you might have had a bad day or a tiring day, makes a really, uh, a, a big impact. There might be times in your family life when it's not possible to have a lot of time but your child, you know, every day, but planning some, you know, regular one-to-one -one time with your, child, with your child, you know, can, you know, makes a, you make that time to be a very precious time. Trust and respect how to nurture yourself, you know, have a positive child relationship, you know, you can nurture and trust and respect in your relationship. For example, be available when your child needs that support, care or help. You know, your child is worried about something, they, you know, they feel stressed out. You should be there. We should be there for parents, you know, as parents or as brothers or sisters or aunties or uncles. We should be there for them, you know, so we should help them. You know, if we've got any issues, we should be talking to our kids as well. And maybe they can give us a, it's not just always parents giving the advice. The children can give us some good support as well, moral support. I mean, Alhamdulillah, I've had down moments and I'm telling you, you know, my youngest son, he just gives me, comes home and gives me a hug and that makes my day. And sometimes he goes, oh, are you okay, mom? Just even asking me, how are you? That makes a lot of difference, you know, having that conversation. And what you need to do is help your child to learn to trust that you'll be there for them, whatever they need. Another thing that we need to do is stick to our promises. And, you know, when you, you know, when we make a promise that we fulfill that promise, you know, get to know your child, ask about, you know, what they enjoy doing, show respect to your child's feelings, opinions, encourage them, you know, keep sharing with them, uh, with your, you know, you know, when they, when your child is expressing different opinions from yours, you know, it doesn't matter if it's different, don't judge them and don't try not to get upset. We, we will get upset. I know that, but then just say in a different way, you know, send a message that you that you're listening to them and help your child in difficult issues like in situations in their future. You want them to come to you, not to others. Um, so allow the relationship, you know, tell the child to develop, you know, it develops them. The child needs, you know, has that interest of, you know, that my mom's listening, my parents are listening. So, you know, for example, you know, your preteen child might no longer want to talk, be around you in the park or with your friends or with his friends. You know, they want, he just wants to hang around with his friends. But you need to have sure that, you know, you want to get involved, say that I want to, you know, be there with you. To conclude this, right, you know, what we need to do is spend quality time with our children. They're a big investment for us. Take interest in each other, you know, have a genuine concerns for each other first and foremost is to be good listeners yeah be patient as well be patient Allah loves the people who are sabarin smile smile is so important it, it honestly changes your day and laugh with one another and spread the love in the house any uh, you know every, you know I hope that everything that I mentioned was good and that you all benefited from it first and foremost I benefit you know I need to do it myself and which I do I try my best to have a happy house, a happy environment. But I do ask my children as well, what can we do to improve? So I hope that everything that I mentioned is good and that we can benefit from, from it and implement it with our children and our family environment. Any good is from Allah and any mistakes are from my own. So please do forgive me. I pray uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta puts family uh, blessings into our families and strengthens our bond with, with one another through the love and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And increase the love and unity between us all and may our families and our uh, parents and children be the coolness of our eyes and may be, and be with us in Jannah al Fardos. Ameen. Thanks for listening and we'll be back to the, for the next, uh, another episode of the Beacons of Hope, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.